Hello and welcome to the Mad Life episode two. Today I'm talking about mental health. I'm here with my brother, Mason. He was kind of going to school a little bit for psychology for a while. He's really into it. I'm really into psychology. I love discussing psychology. Me and my brother will get in conversations for hours about this stuff. And because I've always had anxiety and depression and just all kinds of things, I think a lot of us have that a little bit, but I think that we try to label ourselves as all these things that we think we have issues with and then you're always trying to find a way to fix it and I think before it was oh let's go to get medication and I think I'm on this new journey lately where it's instead of just getting medication with all these side effects that you're a slave to your whole life there's other ways of therapy and people are getting really into medicinal therapy and I just want to kind of talk about different types of therapies my brother's done a few of them um I am thinking about maybe doing one but let's talk about it. Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, you said before people went to therapy, it was like, just do medicine. It was just medicine. And what's yeah. crazy, I was reading a book recently. Before that, it was, let's put you in an insane asylum. Yeah. And hose you and like everyone else <laughs> against the wall because you're broken. And then they and then they figured out, um, what was it? Merc, merc, lithium? Like they started know. giving people lithium and saw a oh. huge, huge spike in people's like mental health, like improving. Wow. And so they said, whoa, we can actually medicate this. And then it was like medicate, medicate, medicate. And now people are moving in a holistic direction mm -hmm. and trying to get away from that. And yeah, so it's I cool. I think with mental health, a lot of people put shame on it and people get embarrassed to talk about it. But why? Because like with physical health, anytime you have anything physical, people are going and getting fit, like a cast or whatever it is that you have to do for physically. But like with mental people always tell you, Oh, you're not being grateful. Oh, you're not, you're just, Oh, acting sad. Or I don't know. I think people don't realize it's an actual imbalance and there's a way to fix it. Yeah. And it's a way of training your mind. I think that's a new way. Instead of fixing the imbalance with medication, there's a way to rewire your brain. So you don't have to be on medication. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than I, I look at it, I like to make, references like in analogies to the physical body so like it's like instead of having a a wound then you just put a band-aid on top of it it's like stitches yeah like it's like actually getting in there and healing what's going on and not just like stopping the bleeding and then when you take the band-aid off it's going to bleed again yeah so it's like really stitching that shut doing in and, and that's painful in the in short term it can be harder work yeah. to, to stitch it and to go through that than just put a band-aid but in the long term it actually mm -hmm. heals and you're free from it you never have to even put the bandaid again. Yeah, I think with some of the medicine that people are taking, it's numbing things. So then when they get off of it, they don't have they sometimes they don't have the full emotions anymore or they're not feeling things and they're not really diving into what caused the issues. Where I feel like with these medicines it'll open up different parts of your brain and your cognitive what is it? The other cognitive cognitive. Cognitive brain. <laughs> That you don't use every day? Yeah. Well, you have your subconscious mind. Oh, subconscious. That's what yeah, I was yeah. going to say. Subconscious. Subconscious. That's what I was trying to say. I was like, yeah. not cognitive. Well, well mo most of, our, most of our daily lives goes, like, we go about it habitually. And so I, I forget exactly what percentage it is. And I'm sure it's hard to, like, literally measure that. But 20%. Well, studies show it's, it's closer to, like, 80 or 90% of your daily actions are, are looking like habitual like you just repeat them and you don't even think about them yeah. so maybe only about you know 10 to 20 percent or 15 percent of what you do every day you're actually consciously choosing it mm. and so i mean yeah if we go specifically we talk about psilocybin it increases your neuroplasticity it makes new neural connections and pathways possible so all of a sudden instead of habitually thinking through maybe like a trauma or a specific mindset about something in life all these new pathways are are just as viable and just as open to you. And now you can see new perspectives mm -hmm. because it's like little kids learn languages faster. That's neuroplasticity and that hardens up. Our brains harden up as we get older and this makes them a little more malleable again. So it's like, you're like almost like a little kid in a sense. And you can like yeah. see this wonder in the world and you can see these new perspectives and you can explore those. And there's danger in that. And that's why you want to do it safely safely by and the way i'm here quickly. kyler's here if you hear an extra voice coming in he's in here he's just not on camera so he's adding in some stuff i think a lot of the times when we grow up our environment or things that we learn we have these like learned behaviors and i think that's w what adds into like when you're just on autopilot and you're saying like you get through your day doing certain things like certain ways that we all of a sudden will act or react to things is like a learned behavior you don't even notice while you're acting that way and it comes from an old trauma that you've never opened mm-hmm 
And so you have to kind of rewire it, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they say they, have, they say you have to learn to question the things that you don't question. Like mm-hmm. those are the things that make you what you are. Okay. So the things like daily where you like think about it and you question it, like those likely are not the things that are actually subconsciously deep down going on that are determining your habits and your patterns. Yeah. And so how do you then begin to dig those things up and take a look at what you normally just take as your normal every day, mm-hmm. you dig it up and you actually examine it and take a look at it and see, okay, do I like this? Or is this something that I feel needs to change for my life to be? Yeah. I've noticed, you know, we have, of, we, we have a lot of friends or whatever, uh, however, that it's almost becoming an addiction. Like they need it to fix their issues. Mm, yeah. Talk about that because, you know, you have some experience with this and, and we're noticing, you know, changes in people that are, that are changes that, that are changing who they are all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you, I think what what I've seen in some of my friends that go to get help is they're becoming like that godly figure is what you're saying. Like they think Mm -hmm. that God complex, God complex. So what's happening is they're thinking, Okay, I'm cutting out everything that's toxic. That person, that person, that person, that person, mm-hmm. that person, that thing. I am better than that. I am whole. I am I am strong. I am this. And so I'm cut, I'm going to cut out all these things that make me miserable. But what they don't realize is the things that they're cutting out could be a beautiful thing. It could be a great relationship. I think instead of cutting it out and being like, I can't handle that. Mm-hmm. Um, how can we fix it? How can we communicate better? How can you learn to live with all different types of people in this world? Well, through therapy and through therapy, they're almost taught to cut those things out. And when they toxic, do cut that, they don't deal out. with the problem because it's toxic in their environment yeah. right now. It's not, it's not, okay, it's let not. Mason a, tell us what he thinks about that. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I want to go back to what you said, like how mental health for a long time was taboo. Mm -hmm. and how like obviously you can observe a broken leg and you can fix it mental health when it gets when it gets to an extreme level like psychosis and someone is like punching walls and stuff you can go oh yeah like that's observable but mental health is so intricate there's it's so it can be so confusing so intricate you you can look at your own mind like you can sit there and think and have no clue what's going on And there's variables that are hard to connect. And so you can be like, well, why am I feeling like, why am I feeling angry right now? And you can genuinely ask yourself that question and not be able to pull up an answer. And you can try, you can go after that answer and you can find the wrong one. You can have the wrong idea. And then Mm -hmm. you can start living your life based off of a story you've created about why you're angry. That's not the actual reason. Yeah. And so our mental health and our, perception it's all subjective and it's all based off of our perspective and so i just want to like preface what i'm going to say with that it's it's complex and it's it's like it's subjective it's like you have to balance reality with also the idea of like you need to do what makes you happy with the idea of yes you need to cut certain things out of your life that are hurting you Mm -hmm. but you also have to see like you can't just avoid discomfort because we grow under discomfort yeah and Um, yeah, so I want to, I just want to say it's a very complex issue. And so because it's complex, I think it's important to never judge anyone Mm -hmm. for, for where they're at in their mental health journey. So for example, like if you, you have, you, you've been talking about friends who have completely changed and you feel like they're just cutting things out. That's like obviously tragic from an outside perspective to, to look at that and say, I don't see that as the most, I don't see like, because I love you friend, Mm -hmm. I want what's best for you. And I don't see this as what's best for you from my perspective, but our perspective is limited too. So we're all just doing our best. And, and, and I think like, I just want to explain where I'm coming from, at least like from a non-judgmental point. Yeah. Um, however, that being said, there are like are legitimate dangers and legitimate risks. And I think within this mental health movement, um, as it becomes more mainstream and more people are facilitating who are not qualified to facilitate because you know, people get into it and then they go, you know what? Like, I want to do this. Like, I want to be the one, I want to be the one, I want to be the one that's going to, that's helps people. It feels good to be the one to, to change people's lives. But these are the kinds of things that in the past, before this became really big, these were shamans whose it was their birthright. Maybe you should explain to them what these journeys are that people are doing. 
Okay. Yeah. So that they know like what we're talking about here. Cause that they, they might think these people are going into a therapy session for an hour with a counselor and coming out and changing. Yeah. And so I, it's not and, exactly what we're talking about. What's up, Kylie? Oh no, no. I'm just breathing. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Let's, let's just, I'll give a couple examples. There's a ton of different, like everything under the sun. There's so many different ways that people are, are doing this and engaging in, in plant medicine or substance assisted therapy. But, um, you know, take, take a facilitator, um, and they have a house Mm -hmm. and a nice home and they send out a a mass email to people who just know about, know this facilitator, it's word of mouth. So like I might say, Hey Madison, like there's this retreat I'm going to on September 5th and I would love for you to come with me. Like, is that something you'd be interested in? You'd be like, oh, well, what is it? And I'm like, well, it's life changing. It's, it's this, you know, you take a substance, a plant medicine or, or a, a medicinal drug. And there's a, a couple of facilitators there who are very professional. And they're, if you have any questions or if you get into a state of mind where you need extra help, they'll help you. But in general, like you're going to try to work through your stuff and it's healing through belonging. It's a community type thing where we're all going to come together. Yeah. We're going to work through stuff, talk through our traumas. And so it, it, I feel like with these kinds of therapies, it really helps rewire the brain without having to feel like you are on a drug your entire life with all of these mm-hmm. negative side effects. I think that's why these plant medicines are do so many things. We've seen documentaries on how these can change people's entire life. And I feel like these aren't being talked about enough because I think they're healing people in ways that I don't know. The deep government doesn't want us to heal it. Right? Yeah, one hundred percent. But at the end of the day, at the know. end of the day, I, I come like from. They try to. You should watch the documentary. It talks about that. Well, so what I what I see that's really cool though is it is being talked about. So yeah. so I think it's becoming more talked about. Yeah. So like for example, neuroscientist Andrew Huberman. He's a professor of ophthalmology and uh, neuroscience at I want to say Stanford. Yeah. And they're doing a ton of clinical research on different different drugs. So like ketamine, they're doing it on uh, MDA or MDMA. They're doing it on psilocybin, among others. And and the research coming, like John Hopkins Medical is releasing. Okay. Yeah, John Hopkins is releasing research around psilocybin and showing how it's changed. It's curing people's PTSD, OCD, anxiety, depression. Mm-hmm. Like there there is genuine research being done and released and that's really cool and if and there's a documentary now on netflix that came out like how to change your mind yeah and yeah, we've read the we've reason watched i that. say yeah the reason i say that they don't want us to know about it and why they they don't talk about it enough is because i think that it's healing people to where they don't have to keep coming back it's a money thing i mm. think with these other drugs that they've got all these people addicted to in our country or around the world you get these negative side effects. You have to deal with your whole life. You have to keep getting more. You have to keep yeah. getting more and you're addicted to it. Whereas these other things you can, some people, yeah, you'll do it. You, you don't have to just do it one time. You can do it a few times. But I think some, you even said, and from lots of friends I've known, they go even one time. It can change everything. Oh, dependency is certainly profitable. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We noticed a massive change in you. And it can cause Mason. issues. I, I mean, for real. Like yeah. massive change in my brother since he started doing some of this. Which which is great to hear. It's it's hard. I can I mean, there was a specific point in, in my mental health journey where mm-hmm. I had to actually accept that my actions were better than how I viewed myself. So like my, I I was focusing on changing my actions and who I was like my integrity as a person Mm -hmm. being honest, like all the time, even when it's uncomfortable or, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, but like my, who I saw in the mirror, because like I went through that breakup and I went through like so many hard things as a result of who I was as well as a result of many things, but like mentally I was very unhealthy. And Mm -hmm. so I was destroying things in my life because I was unhealthy And so things I cared about. And so I lost so much at the same time that I was really like working on myself. It kind of broke me down. And I said, you know what? I want to become like a man that I'm proud of. And I want to, I know I want to have integrity and I want to do all these things. And so then there was a specific point where like people were complimenting me and being like, you're such a good person. Like I love being around you. Your energy is amazing. You make everyone feel so good. Like you teach me so much. The amount of people telling me how much I teach them. And I was like, honestly, it was hard for me to hear and hard for me to receive. And I had to like sit down and like literally like journal like, well, these are my actions. So then does that mean 
like I'm a good person. And so the transformation was like so large, I feel. And thank you for saying that. But like, and this is me making an effort to like accept what you're saying. Like, thank you. But like the transformation was so large, I feel that I had to actually like convince myself to believe it. And, And I think that's what's possible. And we talk about neuroplasticity or these different things. Like when I had the opportunity to see like a new way that I could be, I grabbed onto that and I'm like, I'm not letting this go. And I made it my mission. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going, I'm going to be a better version of myself, the never, highest version of myself. I'll never forget the day we sat. And I hope you don't mind me sharing this, but um, the day, the day we sat on the step out front of your parents' house and you literally had contemplated on several occasions, suicide. Yeah. And we all, we just wanted you there, man. You know? And uh, I'm glad you're here, man. I'm glad you worked through all that. And, um, and that you found the path that kept you, kept you with us, you know, because you are a light to our family and our life. Thanks, man. I think our I'm, family. I'm glad to be here too. I think our family does have a lot of naturally. I don't know if we're like all have some mental issues <laughs> <laughs> because I have had extreme, extreme, extreme depression throughout my life too, and I think like I know some some of our other siblings have as well. Mm-hmm. And then you went through some of that. And I think, um, I don't know where it roots from. It could be genetic too. I know a lot of dad's side of the family deals with some things. And I don't know. I just feel like there's a way to fix things. I I feel like we grew up in a way where where our parents don't take a lot of, like my dad, my dad won't even take Advil if he has a headache. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. it's very like, oh, just be grateful. Just write down what you're grateful for. I think now it's kind of becoming more normal. Like I think a lot of, um, our family members or friends or things like they've gotten used. To, I mean, I, I get like recommended all these like different anxiety medications and things. And when I was on them, it wasn't working. And then I got prescribed to an antidepressant. I took it for three weeks. Wasn't working. Met with my doctor. Told yeah, her, I didn't actually know that. Yeah. And then I, I met with my doctor one day and told her that sometimes I'm feeling like super anxious and sometimes I'm feeling so depressed where I don't even want to extremes, wake up. Extremes. And she like, goes, you're bipolar and gives me a bipolar medication. Uh-huh. And then I bring my this bipolar medication home and I'm looking at the side effects. I'm going, there's like four pages yeah, of things that get, it says all the way to seizures, to scary. death, to like heart issues. To I'm like, is this good to put in your bodies? Why do doctors meet with me for five minutes, tell me I'm bipolar when I'm not, and then prescribe me to this. I never took the medication well, ever, what, and I'm not bipolar. What is bipolar? Like, like if you know. really look at like, so you can, I can, I, like, I can look at your arm like you fell off your bike. Yeah. And I can look at your, your arm doesn't move. I can say, oh, that's a broken arm. Yeah. Okay, but why? Like, like what is ha- actually broken? Like, what's happening with the bone? What's mm-hmm. happening with the blood supply? Like, like what is actually internally going on? So I can say that's a broken arm cast, but if we don't x-ray and if we don't maybe go in and like graft something or, or put a bolt or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some broken arms, you don't just put a cast mm-hmm. and, and antidepressant, like I, I like the physical analogies, but like antidepressant or, or bipolar medication is like a cast for a broken arm, but like we need to go in and figure out exactly the nature of the broken arm. And and I think like that is the downfall of prescribing medications. Yeah. Is well, they didn't even ask me enough questions. Right. And, and you can, and, and here's the thing. I've actually gone through moments in my life where I'm like, am I bipolar? Because I'll have such highs and such lows yeah, and everything in between. But I think that that's in many cases, just being a human. And it's important to dance with that. It's like a wave and, and like waves have highs and lows and you're going to ride them and you're going to flow with them. And if every single time you have a high or every single time you have a low, you start trying to label yourself and yeah. say, oh, something's wrong with me. That's going to exacerbate that low. It's yeah. going to be like, you're going to go even lower. And so I'm not going to knock bipolar. Like I, there are genuine mental health illnesses that yeah. should be medicated. But what is like the actual subconscious programming that causes someone to be bipolar? Because they're mm-hmm. not just bipolar for no reason. Yeah. So like we're looking at like, because bipolar disorder, there's generally a trigger that triggers you either manic or depressive. Yeah. I want to say like, and so this is where holistic healing and a more holistic approach to, to psychology is a lot healthier p- for people because rather than the band aid on your bipolar you're going to actually dig in there and figure out like our minds are like computers. It's like windows or Apple software or whatever. You have a processor, 
you have a specific amount of RAM, like how many programs you can have open at the same time, almost in your mind. Like that's why we get mm -hmm. overwhelmed if we can't like let things go. Like if you're holding on to like all of these like grudges against people or whatever, like your brain starts to fill up with all of this stuff. And like now any little thing feels overwhelming. Yeah. And so you have to clear out, you got to force quit. Like when you're swiping up on your phone, almost like you got to like clear <laughs> stuff out of your yeah. mind and like all like, this programming is what leads to mental health illnesses. Yeah. They don't just like, unless it's, unless it's a literal chemical imbalance and chemical imbalances. And some people have that. But I didn't feel like I had that. And I was, didn't feel like she was advocating for what, for me and really trying to figure that out. I think that's what was bothering me about. Well, and what determines, what determines when and how chemicals are released in your brain? Like the programming in the brain. The programming that so we have. So unless the actual glands have, and I'm not like a, I've studied a lot of neuroscience. I want to like disclaimer, I'm not a neuroscientist, but like this, this is backed up by a lot of stuff. Like unless you have a literal issue with the gland that's going to release whatever chemicals we're talking about, like you, that's all controlled by the mind when, when serotonin is released or when these different, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I've heard that, um, cause what was I, I was going to get on Lexapro. Mm -hmm. Don't you, my, my sister's take? I think so. I have a friend on they that. They say it's talking. literally changed their life. They're so happy. They see everything different. They're, they're slow to anger. They are very patient. Cool. And I was like, I'm getting on that. But then when I hear about these therapies, I go, is that going to be better for me? So I'm at this limbo stage right now. I'm like, do I get on Lexapro? Do I go to these therapies? So this I was, is a really valid point. I was going to book a therapy first and see how it goes. And then if it, if I first try to heal myself that way and then maybe think about Lexapro after, I'm not sure. But I, yeah. I feel like maybe I could try to heal myself with these. I don't have to be on anything. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is the right thing, but I think it's a, it's a, it's a pathway to open your, open your brain up to self-healing yeah, it's self -healing. Yeah, like your answers are within because, yourself. Type yeah, be, of yeah, exactly. And I think a lot of these drugs, just like when I was a kid, it was like, oh, like he can't focus in school? Ritalin. And I took Ritalin yeah. for like 10 years of my life. It made life. me super serious, it Made right? me depressed. I didn't want to eat. Like nobody knew what it was doing to you. Mm -hmm. Dude, and they had me on Vyvanse and Adderall and it same. like, and it was messing yeah. with my relationships in school because oh, yeah. I started to like, started to feel like I was the smartest person in my school and like start judging <laughs> other can do that. I would like, like start trying to like design rocket ships and stuff. Like I thought I was going to be like, <laughs> I was hypersensitive. Yeah. I was hypersensitive to the way people thought about me when I was on that. Era. Okay. Me so too. Yeah. I, I was super worried about what people thought of me. So I almost kept my mouth shut where I'm the kind of person that's just like out there and I have fun and I talk to people and I enjoy conversation and I love life. And I did not love life when I was on those drugs, but it, it was the standard back then. It was like, oh, he's not focused. Mm -hmm. Bam, Ritalin. Well, well, and when you give, when you prescribe, I never took my stuff as prescribed because I had enough like sense to realize that it was creating a dependency for me. Because when you take this every single day at the same time, every single day, you're seriously training the chemicals in your mind to expect that to come in. Mm -hmm. So it's going to like your, whatever your brain produces is going to automatically be lower than baseline or whatever or whatever enzymes break it down are higher than baseline and so now if you don't take it you have all these enzymes in your body that are meant to break this down and it's not there so now it's going to mm. break down what is there which is producing less because it hasn't needed to for so long because you're supplementing it artificially and so now all of a sudden you are in this extreme low and you feel like if i don't take this i'm not going to function today yeah and so like again back to the dependency thing and and i think like we're talking about one extreme end and extremes are great because i think we learn a lot in extremes mm -hmm. but like the other extreme end is science is all we have and we need to trust our scientists and and if we don't then we're signing ourselves up for some unknown disaster yeah and i think the truth lies somewhere in between like yeah. we're like like I think Lexapro does change people's lives. Like I it had does. something, I had kind of something against these anti-anxieties. I'm probably going to get on it, but maybe I'm, I'm interested in this other therapy as well. Yeah. Well, and I think it's important to follow your intuition. Like if, if you're feeling like, you know what, I want to explore some more holistic stuff before going on to something like that. Mm -hmm. Cause you're not ignoring science. Yeah. Like, like, like read what John Hopkins has released about psilocybin, about mushrooms, read what's what, um, Andrew Huberman at Stanford is releasing about it. Mm -hmm. Like 
research into the neuroscience and and look at what's what they're releasing i mean the the benefits are insane so like if we take psilocybin in rats they noticed an increase in neurons and i i do think that they're doing human trials now this is the only research paper i really read that was on yeah. rats it was like a 10 percent increase in neurogenesis so like these rats brains literally were getting 10 percent bigger like 10 percent more neurons wow. it was strengthening the connections between neurons which protected brains against neurodegenerative diseases like 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 it, it can protect your mo- your brain against like alzheimer's like these different things that cause your brain to break down wow yeah it's like this is what research is showing and it's showing that like yes there's risk but it's showing that there's little physiological risk from psilocybin Mm -hmm. it can trigger like marijuana or other substances it can trigger pre-existing mental health conditions like psychosis or bipolar so you want to be really careful and you don't want to just like go running into it like you want to be very intentional about which is why if you're going to if you're going with a therapist who is a who is guiding the journey or like these things it's like you're just going and taking it and being like i'm gonna heal myself you have to have like an intention you need to be with somebody guiding it the person that was going to do my journey if i end up doing it they like she's you're hooked up to even um they check your pulse all the time okay so they're monitoring your vitals monitoring and, all your vitals yeah um they are there with you the whole time they i don't know like it's it's like a controlled environment it's not like you're just oh out here in the woods trying to find myself. Sure. You know what I mean? Out in the woods trying to find yourself can be very fun, but but maybe not but for like your first to one to <laughs> ten times. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, it's it's smart. It's smart to to try to predict and prevent as many potential issues as you can. Mm-hmm. And and there are potential negative side effects to absolutely everything. Yeah. There's side there are gonna be side effects to not taking Lexapro. Or trying to heal and this. And side effects to also take because, it. Because we've proven that if you deal with chronic stress and anxiety, it raises your blood pressure. It increases your risk for heart disease. Like So now all of a sudden, by not confronting this, yeah. you're, you're, you're putting yourself at risk for life-threatening illnesses, diseases. It increases your chance of cancer. So that's true. So, so, so like no matter what, we're humans. <laughs> no what we're we're, we're humans issues. on a planet that is beautiful but sometimes cruel. And like, yeah. and, and can be very unforgiving and like health wise, like we like, we're all going to die. And, and so, so like, what, what can we do to live our happiest possible, healthiest possible life where we're going to live from a place of love with open hearts, with mm-hmm. open minds, where we can Want accept to communicate others, with everybody and accept everyone. raise our children intentionally so that they can move on to like bless the world. How can we be intentional about how we take care of the environment, how we yeah. take care of each other, how like compassion, like, like reducing our waste, like, like all of these things that matter a lot in as a human and as humanity and mm-hmm. to take care of our planet and each other, like, like yeah. what is going to get us there? I like, what else is the point of all this mental health stuff? If not to find happiness, and to do it in a way where it's going to bring light to the world. Cue little Dickie's well said. song. Well What? I, I, I don't... <laughs> what's, what's that? Cue little Dickie's song. Oh, what's little Dickie's song? We love the earth. This yeah. is our planet. I haven't heard that, but... Oh, it's great. Like sounds great sounds like it's song, like my... Right? That should play every time I walk into a room. I don't know. Um... But that's well said. I agree with all of that. I think ultimately the, the mental health journey everybody should be on is to get to that point. I think if we were all living that way, that would be ideal. I think that's what everybody wants to be at. I think everyone has, I, I think don't know. I think this is a good segue into the concern like that we haven't really addressed. We haven't really dug into the pitfalls of this. Okay. And like the potential negative effects and like what you've seen in some of your friends, like okay. how like they've completely transformed into something that's like maybe not helpful for the world. Yeah. Maybe it's spreading more negative energy um, because in order, okay, you have to look inward. Like what Kyler was talking about, like, let's go inward. Let's look at our own traumas. Like, let's go in there and sort that all out. So going inward is a selfish, not in the, like the original term of the word, like you're selfish, mm-hmm. but it is a selfish, literally process. Like you have to, you have to prioritize yourself to do that. You have to say, you know what? I matter. Yeah. Loving myself matters. My health and loving, happiness matters. Loving yourself and knowing that you matter and, and trying to cut out things that are making you feel like you're not your whole self. It's not natural. I don't know. I feel like there's still a way to love yourself 
And by loving yourself, you should love people more. Now you can you can have better relationships with your friends. Like it feels weird to go and feel like you, you have this very special day and you like you're healing yourself, and then all of a sudden it's like I can't deal with anything else in my life because I am focusing on me right now. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that that feels strange to me because if I was it feels going selfish, if I was going to like heal myself, like the other selfish, the other on, selfish. on a <laughs> like day, the and I yeah. even if I was going to like heal things that were so hard for me, like old things that I've dealt with as a teen and like really hard things. I, even on the hardest day like that, if I had anybody reach out to me like for help or whatever, I would be in a sense of love. I'd be in like a a new sense. I don't know. Unless they're like. And and you have one of the most beautiful hearts I've ever encountered. Like you're, you're such a sweet person and you're uh, just, you're, you're a beautiful person. And that's why I think you have a lot of eyes on you. Yeah. Right now. Thanks. Yeah. Like I think people, the world needs love and there's mm-hmm. a lot of closed hearts right now and there's a lot of cold stuff going on. And so, yeah, you've always been the one that like, even when stuff is hard, you were the first one to crack, like make a joke that makes the whole, <laughs> like when our family was arguing, we were at each other's throats. Like yeah. you would be the one to make a joke and make like mom laugh. And then once mom <laughs> laughed, we were all like, <laughs> yeah. Well, and like everything was okay all of a sudden. And that's a bit, and that's a coping thing too. I can't take it. But seriously. it also comes from a place of love. Yeah. Like, it's, like I think you want to help everyone. Yeah. Like you want to yeah. love the people around you. And so, so that's actually what I was going to say. I was going to say, like, when we talk about extremes, Mm -hmm. I think answers rarely lie in the extreme. So if someone in an extreme way says, you know what, I'm going to extremely go into a selfish direction on an extreme level. And I'm going to just, you know what, like, don't, don't talk to me. Don't bother me. I don't need you here right now because I'm focusing on me and this is about me. That's very, very extreme. Yeah. There's truth in it though. Again, like, but never, never focusing in on yourself and always giving, 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 giving of yourself to others, even when you feel overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. That's the other extreme. And and we see how that hurts people. And we see how that causes and people to break. I think that's where I think my friends were feeling. I think they are very big hearts and they are very giving. They and were, like, so they were on one they extreme. They were on the extreme of like, they keep giving, 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 giving and never get back. So then, then they go to therapy And they take this plant medicine, whatever substance they take that generally allows you to form new connections in your mind, see new perspectives and they see, oh my gosh, I haven't been choosing myself. Yeah. And they see, oh my gosh, I can see all the ways it's been hurting me and hurting my relationships. And they go, it's time for me to choose myself. Yeah. And there's strength and courage. It's good to choose yourself. There's strength and courage and beauty in that. Yeah. But when you go to an entire other extreme end, now you're missing the whole picture because people are so quick to alienate what they were. And then they're labeling their friends. That person's mean, that person's toxic. And I'm like, yes, but wait, we're not like some people might not be fully mean. They might just yeah. been having, having imperfections an imperfection on one day, one occasion that might've offended you. Yeah. But you have to see the full side of people. I think that's and there's a culture of see. immediately cutting people off right now. The second they do anything. Cancel culture. Like yeah. It's like, right it's like, and, and that lack of patience for people yeah. is what actually prevents growth mm-hmm. within relationships. Literally because, there's, there's no patience for anybody right now in yeah. business, anything yeah. like, like, Oh, you if something wrong, you're done. Oh my gosh. Like if, if, if they don't have the money to do this right now, their intentions aren't pure. Like they're screwing me. Like and how sad is that? They cut it's people off so, in, in one in one yeah. issue. Like they don't get another chance. They oh, don't yeah. get. I'm always the guy. I had done. I had somebody call me the other day and and you know talk to to me through the process of potentially suing somebody for you know, some work that they had done like two months before they expected the company to, to go public and like make a, you know, a billion dollars like this, the next week or something. Like I was so confused by her decision to want to move forward and sue this person. I had to like, Whoa, pull the reins back, relax, let him go through the process and prove you wrong first. He hasn't proved you wrong. Yeah. And, and what, like, and what is the motivator for that? Do you think like, I think it's fear. Like I think it's, she's she's fearing the potential consequences. Yeah. And so people are acting yeah. out of fear. Like, mm-hmm. oh no, this might not be a genuine friend. So I'm gonna cut you off before you hurt me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I'm gonna cut this is a place of trauma. That's not healed. Yeah. When you're healed, in my opinion, this is my opinion, if you're healed, you 
have accepted that we, there's beauty and there's high points in life, but you've mm-hmm. also accepted the, like, what's that song? If you want trust, you're going to have to give some away or whatever. Oh, yeah? Like if like, like that song, it's kind of like a cliche, but it's true. Like there's actually a lot of deep truth in that. And mm-hmm. it's like his mom talking to him and teaching him some life lessons. It's like, yeah, if you want trust, you're going to have to give some away. Yeah. If you want love, you're going to have to go through the pain. Mm-hmm. Like, like that is the whole concept is like, if you want, if you want the love in your life and you want those relationships, you're going to have to give people enough trust that they could hurt you. Yeah. And you're going to have to allow them to make mistakes. But there's a balance. Like if people are habitually in a cycle where it's, they hurt you, they keep hurting then you. they apologize then they and then they you hurt again. you again and they apologize and they hurt you again. You keep forgiving. Then now we're getting like to a, a point. Yeah. We're getting to a point where you have to put up a boundary. To- mm-hmm. Toxicity happens when expectations are too high. And people have expectations of, of, oh, he hurt me. I expect an apology. Otherwise, I don't want to be their friend. And oh, it's like, so like it's conditional. Like, yeah, it's conditional on upon apology when really our relationship should be much stronger than that. You should be able to have a conversation and say, look, this hurt me. What's your side? Sure. Yeah, just open communication and, and ask, asking questions and say, trying oh, to well, understand. They can say, oh, you hurt me too. Here's my side. And then you can come to an agreement. Yeah. Yeah. I and that's, that's, commu- that's patient communication and, and it's rare. I don't think that the way to fully, fully, fully heal yourself is to find you make yourself completely like you're whole and the world doesn't matter. I think we have to learn how to live together in this world. Yeah. We're, we're this an, or- is we're an our organism. It, this is our planet. It's exactly <laughs> that. I think we it's not all about <laughs> we're bringing the music, the musical lessons in today. <laughs> Everyone's like spending their whole life trying to make themselves whole, themselves whole, themselves whole. And then they're not giving any extra thought to like making relationships whole well, it's, everywhere it's, around it's, them all day long. It's only a part of the picture. It's so a like, part of it. Cause, cause you do have to make yourself whole or you can't give yourself. Which right. Is You're like, well, you important. have to, you have to fill your cup. Yeah. Or else your cup is empty and, and you can't. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so like in my four and a half year relationship, like what I attribute a big part, like, like what broke that down, at least as far as my mistakes went mm-hmm. was I wasn't taking care of myself and filling my cup. Yeah. And so all of a sudden now I need my significant other to do that for me. I need them. And then I'm you're putting pressure on them. Pressure and to issues. be perfect and to per, like to be exactly what I need them to be. Because if they're not, I'm going to be uncomfortable because I'm going to start seeing how my cup is empty and I feel overwhelmed and I feel depressed and I feel like a lack of motivation. It's very codependent. Kind of very codependent. I am a little bit like, I feel like I give a lot of like my energy all day um, and everything I do and everything. I don't know, to my family and to my friends and I'm a giver. So mm-hmm. I, I will, if I'm like, have, haven't showered yet, haven't eaten, um, have a million things to do. And somebody asks, tells me that I need to be somewhere for them on that day. I'll go. And then yeah. I put myself further back. And I think that then my cup is so empty that that's when I get these depressions. So, so I think it's, like, I so I think it's important to see this not as a, as a two part scale, like yeah. where you're at and where you should be. Okay. But there's this extreme you're at. There's the balanced middle ground. And mm-hmm. then there's an extreme over here. Yeah. And you want to stay out of this extreme zone. And that's where a lot of people fall. They skip the balanced center. Yeah. And they run all the way to the other extreme. Mm-hmm. And there's there's reasons for that. I mean, it, it feels good to like be in extremes in this like. You feel like you're all of a sudden getting this. In like, this like victimized in- sort of way. Well, and I feel like I'm getting like something out of helping somebody, but then, mm-hmm. and, but then I'm like getting gypped on my end. But then at the same time, I don't know, like then if I cut out all my friends and be like, oh, I can't hang out with them because I'm too busy, then I get depressed about that too, because I want to be like doing all of it. I don't know. Yeah. And that's just being a human. And that's yeah. like the, con- the, the constraints of, of space and time and, and like daylight and like how quickly we can physically move I our bodies know. Like, around. Sometimes I don't I'm like, I don't having like five I have kids, friends, because I have five kids. You've got five kids, and you've got boxes arriving on your doorstep constantly. Every second, my house and is always messing. I'm yeah. always cleaning. And so, and so, sometimes yeah. we try to fix things that don't need fixing. That it's really just changing your mindset. Changing right? your mindset and your perspective, like because 
we can't always change our external world. It like the, a good example is someone who bounces relationship to relationship and they keep experiencing the same problem, even though it's different people. Mm-hmm. What's the common denominator mm-hmm. is Them. mindset and you. And yeah. so if you try to run from your life, like you're going to keep running and you're going to keep hitting the same problem. Those are generally the people who need therapy. The yeah. People who go from person to person to person and wonder what the problem is. Uh, Self-examination first. Look at the pattern. Look at the pattern and yeah. then get help. Yeah. I think for and, me... And these things take time to I, change. Like it's. I get stuck with... One of the issues I think that I need to fix is I get stuck with... Like I'm a kind of a perfectionist. So mm-hmm. I think everything in my life has to be perfect before I do this. I always say, I'm going to be happy when this. I'm going to be happy when this. When my house yeah. is clean, then I can go do this. When all of like... I don't know. I always like have these... Like put these labels and then I get stuck... And then I don't, I don't feel like I'm living. Yeah. Can I, I want to share something actually. Oh, okay. wait, I don't even, I don't know where my phone is, but I can I just say phone. it from memory. Okay. I was DMing someone on Instagram, a stranger. It's this girl who like, I think she lives in the UK mm-hmm. and she's super nice. She'll always like message me. Like when I post a story or something, she's like, so proud of you. Like you're amazing. Like you're doing a great job. And it's like, oh, thank you. Like it's a nice, really nice person. And so we were having a conversation. What are you laughing about over there? <laughs> so we were having a conversation um, and I posted a picture of a rainbow and she messaged me and she said, wow, like it really makes you wonder what's on the other side. And I was like, well, mm. what do you think is on the other side? And she's like, where you're meant to be. And I was like, oh, interesting. I'm like, so do you feel like where you're at right now is not where you're meant to be? And she mm. goes, no. Like there's always the next step. There's always another place to go. And I actually, I feel bad. I didn't actually respond to that because I think like I wanted just to let that sit. Like I, I just, I, in the moment I was thinking like, "Um, how do I feel about this? Yeah. Because like, yes, it's true. Like as humans, we progress, especially like an ambitious person like you or like Kyler um, or like Mateus over here. What up, Mateus? <laughs> no, yeah, like like a very ambitious group of people. That's why like you've got a neon sign on your wall and you're making podcasts <laughs> and like like it's very very yeah. ambitious and it's and it's 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 important you're to remember thinking about what's next. It's important to remember that we're animals. Like we're biological animals. We're humans, and so we have biological drives and urges. And like, what has caused our species to climb the ranks and be the rulers of this planet over yeah. all like the 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 lions and the other humanoid species that were alive like we have a constant drive to accomplish more so biologically it's wired into us to not Mm -hmm. be satisfied where we're at so it's important to look at that and understand that and say you know what biologically i'm fighting an uphill battle biologically my brain is wired to not be satisfied where i'm at wired to want to do more and more and more and more when you get there you want to go to the next step like you don't want to be stuck so don't label yourself as broken because that happens to you like so this is perspective it's actually good see if you rewire your brain of new thinking new thoughts like i'm not broken the fact that i want to always have something more yes better or not and better. it's and it's, I o- like what I have, it's but... okay to feel that way and it's also okay to acknowledge how it's hurting your life because because it's actually like yes it's helped our species survive yeah. and grow and thrive evolutionarily speaking but like does it help us be present and enjoy this little moment with our kids that's what does I think it help us the balance. does it help us feel present like just cuddling with our significant mm-hmm. other and watching a movie if we're always feeling like we got to get to the next thing. Sometimes when I'm playing Barbies with the girls, the first thing I'll play Barbies for 30 seconds. And then the th- next thing I do is I look over and I see a mess and I go, all right, you guys keep playing. I'll be right back. And I start hanging up clothes. And mm-hmm. I'm going, why am I in here hanging up clothes now? And they always are going, mom, are you almost done? I'm like, just, I'm cleaning one more thing. And I'm yeah. putting their, their pajamas in a drawer and I'm now I'm on a full cleaning mode. And I go, okay guys, you keep playing. I'll be right back. And I'm doing laundry. I'm like, why do I always have to go into cleaning? I have like so, this cleaning. So addiction. here's what's cool. You have like two pieces of this puzzle. You yeah. have an awareness that, yeah. that it's happening. Mm-hmm. You also can see and you have an awareness of how it's affecting pr- your presence in your life and your relationships. Yeah. And that you may have regrets. Yeah, I have regrets at night. So when they go to bed, I'm like, dang, I should have played Barbies for longer than five minutes. So then <laughs> the missing piece is how, how to change this for yourself. Yeah. So that like you can and will like if because you want it and I can see that you can and will change this to a point where you don't even like think about it. Like mm-hmm. for a while, it's going to be like you have to actively change your actions. But at one point it will become habit 
that you will just enjoy the little moments. Yeah. Like you will just feel present. And that's very much achievable through a lot of different modalities. It could be therapy and Lexapro, mm -hmm. or it could be a more holistic retreat, like where you even like fly out to Costa Rica or Peru that or Mexico nice. and go like there's traveling heals me. I'm every time I get back from a trip, I feel like a whole new person. You know, what heals me is working out. Working oh, out dude, too. huge yeah. working yeah. out. I come home if I get a good workout in and I'm not on my phone the working whole time or whatever, huge. and I get a good workout. I come out of there super humble, super grateful. I come home, I enjoy different. my kids. My whole day feels different. Yeah, right. I'm the same way. It's just hard to get myself there because of all these But we don't work blocks. out, so no, I'm just kidding. Well, and there's and there's like the psychological piece to that. Like you're doing a hard thing. You're intentionally putting yourself through discomfort. Yeah. Which is when you choose discomfort, like all of a sudden you you're more well prepared to meet the discomfort you don't get to choose, like having to clean up after your kids or whatever. Cause you're, it's like cold plunging. Like you're shocking your nervous system intentionally. Can we talk about that? Dude, Dude I got into the got river more. yesterday. Like I'm talking yesterday like where? 40 degrees from the glacier. <laughs> the snow runoff. Yeah, bro. <laughs> that was, I felt like a Viking. Dude, I'll turn on Viking music. Like that's what we did. Oh, oh, you will. That's what we did. That's the only way to do it. I did don't... you not see my story? I I've have a hard... never cold plunged. Madison, bro, I'm gonna try it. Hey, this little winter. little little note. Like, if you're gonna cold plunge at home, it can be dangerous. Like, it can actually cause your body to go into shock and stuff. For real? So Why you want to you want to start at a little bit of a higher temperature, lower amount of time. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the cold plunge. Yeah, I can tell you're feeling like a beast. Dude, that. we were like, I mean, the you look dopamine, jacked. The do oh, yeah. Oh, hey, you're listen. like, well, because you are. The dopamine are... hit hard. Yes, oh, dude, yeah. Way, yeah. We are running out of time on this podcast. And so I, how I want to wrap it up is I really, I've seen such a change in you, Mason. Like, I feel like that enough is a testimony to me of like, this works. Mm -hmm. And I have not tried it yet. But I, I have a therapy session actually booked for September and this is my third time rescheduling because I am so nervous. And I think that there's something in that, like, why, why do I keep rescheduling? Why does something always come up? And I think it's because I wasn't ready. And, like, I'm feeling more and more ready the more I talk about it and think about it. Okay. Yeah. So I, wanna, I think I wanna, I'm going to do it. I'm excited for you. I want to give you and everyone else one, like, I think the biggest piece of advice. Okay. Is I think the, the way that you lose yourself and you go down paths that you may not yeah. want when you first start because when you first start you're just looking to make some improvements with like being present with your kids or like mm -hmm. these different things like heal some trauma but i see people go down very very extreme paths yeah and and um and they'll just blow up their lives in ways that they'll probably regret one day and yes, i don't want that to happen. and i think that that happens when you're not strong within yourself so you have to go in there yeah. like knowing who you are and what you well, stand that's what for. That's I'm still trying to find. For sure. I'm I just in general, yeah. go in there knowing who you are and what you stand for. And, mm -hmm. and if you have a therapist who's trying to tell you exactly how to think or what to believe, it's important to surrender into those things and see those perspectives. But just remember, when you take these plant medicines, you're not supposed to make big decisions for like weeks or months afterward. Like you don't want to go and oh, okay. say, you know what? I'm turning my whole life around. I'm going to get a new job. I'm getting a divorce. Like all this stuff. Like... You seriously want to like keep <laughs> patience and this happens like be yeah. patient, it does happen. be patient, realize you've seen a new perspective and realize that it's going to take time to integrate that new perspective into who you already are and into your life and give yourself patience and grace and try to find balance. Try yeah. not to live within the extremes, try to like, and give yourself time and work through it in a logical way. Cause there's a lot of like emotional and trauma body and spiritual stuff going on and big open heart and everything. So it's, nervous. it's, 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 it's finally bringing together a lot of parts of your human mm -hmm. self that you maybe haven't been in touch with. Well, and that can be a big you'll shock. You'll see things that happened when you were like, you could be like eight years old and you didn't even realize that that trauma was oh, yeah. issues and it'll come forward and you can see it. And like, been fighting it your whole life. Yes. You've been right. fighting your whole life and it, it, it honestly opens a new part of your brain. And to be honest, that can be overwhelming and that yeah. can lead you to want to cut things out of your life that are feeling exhausting. Yeah. So now you're cutting off relationships and stuff like just I'm, I'm going to do patience. it patient. I don't know. Like, yeah, like I said, journal. I, it's scheduled, but I don't even know. Question. Just keep questioning yourself. Journal. Write okay. down what. Yeah. yeah. Always keep questioning yourself. Humility, We're going to have to do another part two. episode, part two, after my journey, if I do it. Sick. I would love to. Should I? 
yeah i think i think it's we like have, as far as a science science experiment having the the pre it'll be a science like therapy experiment. and then and then coming in after and being able to sh- like tell like will what you come on here and talk with me uh, yeah i'll share with you kind dude, of dude we would I, we would probably learn a lot of the cool feel. stuff okay i also think we should talk about other forms of therapy that we believe in um things that are things that like are important like faith yeah. Faith, faith okay, brings we'll us. We'll talk about that next time too, because Kyler's a big believer in it. You don't need any of this. No, no, no. I don't. Faith. I don't say that. I don't believe that. Okay. That's not true. Okay. I don't okay, even know why you us. even said that because so that's not true. Me that well, I, no. I, just I think I. My faith I just life. think I think strengthening our faith in in our belief system. Yeah. Um, in God, um, is a huge part of the reason why we go the other way, because when we no, lose our faith, when we lose our faith, and we get away from certain belief systems. We, it's kind of like being in the dark. Okay. We know where the light switch is. We know where it is, but we we're choosing to look for other things in the dark, but we can't, we, a lot of times we squander because we can't see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, if you but just turn on the light, if you just turn Christ. on the light, well, and this is that humility piece I was talking about too, like allowing, whether it's, you call it God or a higher power or the universe or just any form of spirituality, I think are a big part of this crisis is people are losing spirituality and i believe that right now like it's possible to believe in science and spirituality you don't have to believe in a religion you don't have to believe in any sort of specific god but having spirituality and putting your trust in something greater than yourself because did you did you did you give yourself life like did you birth yourself do any of us know how we even exist like we can't as humans even comprehend a beginning like we can call it a singularity a big bang whatever we want to call it a black hole that was infinitely dense. So time and space didn't exist, but that still doesn't explain it. Yeah. And so the fact that we don't even know how we're here, a I little think humility. God created this, but we still, we don't know sure. how he got there. Hey, that's exactly. how, that's for, that is for another, another episode. episode. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cause we could go into, obviously we all have, you know, pretty deep rooted belief systems. And I think that that is, that is a five hour conversation. Yeah. It is. And, and that's why I would just sum it up to like a little humility and like mm-hmm. not trying to control everything in your life, but surrendering some stuff, like yeah. some surrender, just yeah. like control what you can and let everything else yeah. just work itself out. Well, yeah, I'm excited to jump on here and talk about this again. And this is a really cool episode. Let us know your thoughts down below. If you have questions, maybe Mason can go in on my comment section and answer some of them for you guys. Yeah, I'm passionate about this. And Mason, (laughs) subscribe to this channel, you know? Oh, like I'm not even subscribed? (laughs) No, you're not. Can you? (laughs) Will you actually pull out your phone right now and subscribe? I I think it's in the other room. Okay. Okay. Well, can you make a commitment? I have two YouTube channels. I'll subscribe on both. Okay, cool. Go make a difference. That's what MAD stands for. MAD, like make a difference. It's oh my also gosh. my name. So cool. Yeah. Go That's make a, a difference. Big, it's a loving message. <laughs> we'll see you guys on the next podcast. Bye.